So three, two, one, we are live now. So hello everyone, welcome to our today's episode of uh, our series of Connection Wednesdays webinars. And today's topic is uh, ICON, ICON project in Sweden city, Bexia. Um, we have quite a lot of information to share with you today. So uh, I try not to not to spend time with too much details and uh, just jump into the topic itself. We try to uh, split the topic to two parts. So the first one is uh, technical details about the project itself. And the second part will be dedicated to uh, one specific connection which we can or we try to model from scratch so you can see and you can compare what's the difference between today's solution of uh, connection application and what was there some five maybe six years ago so for those who are here with us for first time uh, just briefly about the platform we use it's a go-to platform when where by default uh, the attendees are muted but if you have any questions you can ask anytime uh, in this uh, question panel we try to answer uh, during the webinar or if we can't manage everything there so just after by an email so yeah our topic uh, it's a quite interesting project. It's successfully built. Uh, it was very um, challenging uh, design with huge cantilevers. And it's also a nice example of uh, international uh, cooperation between several offices. So the project itself is in Sweden, but uh, companies working on it, designing the whole bearing structure were from Lithuania and Slovakia and it was designed and uh, most of the bearing members also built and constructed by Peiko company and that's where I'd like to introduce my uh, two panelists to um, two structural engineers from Peiko one is from Lithuanian office Mr. Arturas Vitkus, and the second one is uh, structural engineer Matej Hrubi from Peiko, Slovakia. So, guys, if you can hear me now, uh, you can say hello. Thank you for your presence here. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. So, uh, Mr. Vitkus, uh, was uh, responsible mostly for the uh, main bearing structure and uh, lateral stiffness of the building itself so the the bracing system it's it was up to him and mr ruby responsible mostly for steel structure connections so in the next part i hope they can share some um, more detailed information about the structure and also about the Peiko company itself. What can I say uh, right now is that Peiko is a Finland company um, founded in 1965 and it's family owned, but um, they have very interesting products and they are responsible for, for um, challenging projects all over the world. So Mr. Vitkus, if you can uh, continue, I will be glad. So your presenter is yours. Mm -hmm. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Okay, thanks Jan for introduction. So I will briefly tell about Peiko a little bit more. So as you can see, <clears throat> we are now a global company which has uh, production units in North America, Middle East, Europe, China, and Australia. And uh, our goal is to be a forerunner in uh, slim floor structures, concrete connections, 
and wind energy foundations. Uh, but today our topic is about the icon building. So I will introduce briefly, uh, in short, what, what we have done and how this uh, building structure looks like. So uh, basically it's a multifunctional complex uh, which is uh, consisted of three parts and it is separated by dilatation joint. Uh, one part is a, uh, a hotel which is behind uh, behind the big uh, building and the uh, other part is a six-story floor high school and the biggest and most, most challenging part is a 20-story uh, high building which is up to the cantilever is residential and uh, the top part uh, are offices. Building itself was modeled with Tecla and uh, analyzed with uh, Skia engineer. So main frame of, of the building is uh, braced frame, uh, classical braced frame with pin-ended columns and uh, bracings. And uh, main members are composite columns and uh, slim floor composite beams, delta beams. So we call this uh, delta beam frame. And for stability purposes, we also have uh, steel bracing. Uh, floor was made from the hollow cores and uh, topping on it. What is interesting with uh, this building that uh, uh, in majority of this kind of buildings, the stability is uh, depending on the shear walls or combination of the shear walls and uh, bracings. But uh, in our case, uh, from initial design, it was designed so that the uh, core was not assumed to be a part of a stability system because it was uh, poorly loaded by, by axial forces and it would be pretty uh, challenging to uh, design connections and so on. So in global statical scheme, the core influence was not used, used at all. So all the stability was ensured by the four bracing systems, two in each orthogonal direction. And uh, as you can see, here are the couple of uh, pictures with the bracings. For the bracings, we were using uh, preloaded uh, tension control bolts. And in this picture, you can actually see that the, here is the delta beam, and uh, it's uh, pretty pretty close to the to the core of the building, and uh, and the load on the core is is, is pretty pretty small. So that's uh, why we had uh, only lateral lateral braces as a stability system, and uh, this was the reason actually Peiko was the main main designer of, of of this building, because in most cases when we collaborate with our clients, our clients uh, are responsible for the concrete part and we are responsible for the steel, so they take uh, care of the, of the stability. This was an exception in this project. Uh, here you can see the floor layout in our internal design tool, which calls uh, uh, Delta Beam Peco Designer. And uh, with this tool, we are calculating the composite beams. The system, chosen system was the continuous columns and simple single span beams with uh, hollow core slabs and uh, concrete topping. This system allows uh, to have fast uh, erection of the frame and pretty, pretty simple connections between the columns and the beams. Uh, I would need to mention that most popular uh, frame system in Sweden is uh, continuous, continuous beam and single single story columns. This is preferred one. But for this building, we we chosen the continuous columns. And here you can see the um, typical connection between the composite column 
itself and the delta beam. Uh, more connections you will see from Mati Grubi's presentation. So I will tell just about this typical one. So as you can see, we have the simple column splice at the floor level, which is bolted connection and uh, delta beams were placed on the corbels of composite column. Uh, for tying resistance, for progressive collapse, we were installing the reinforcement which was passing from one beam to another. And uh, also we had the robustness cage between the columns. Nowadays, we developed the, such a connections that, that we don't need uh, to install this additional rebars. Uh, one of the most challenging uh, part in this project was uh, cantilever. Actually, this was the reason we were selected uh, by frame contractor because in the tender stage, we are only one who uh, gave at least some kind of idea how it will be erected. So erection itself, was split in a part so first uh, the right part which was standing on the column was assembled together with the uh, with the hollow core slabs and then uh, the truss itself it is split by uh, simple elements which were delivered to construction site and they're assembled to the the half truss we also use some temporary elements to, to have uh, better better stiffness and stability of the truss during uh, during assembly, and also to control the position of the nodes, so that all of these four nodes uh, can be connected in the air. So this half truss was connected uh, to the assembled part, and then uh, some diagonal T was assembled later and later on the rest of the of the structure was built here you can see some pictures from construction site uh, for assembly of the cantilever uh, mobile cranes were used up to three sometimes maybe four four cranes were used and here are the more pictures of the cantilever you can see the bolted connections so the welded joints we decided to have uh, in the factory so all the complicated stuff is is done in the factory and on the side we have only splicing connections which are the full strength so they're uh, stronger than the elements they are connecting uh, to make a cantilever as light as possible we decided to use uh, non-usual solution for the Swedish market it is more standard in uh, in Britain so we used the uh, cellular beams with a composite deck uh, this solution we had the lightest possible slab system for the cantilever and here are some more pictures from construction site. And this is how looks like finished building. So this is not, not a visualization, this is the picture. And uh, this is the last slide from my side. And now I can give a word to my colleague, Mati Hrubi, who can tell you more about the connection design itself. Thank you, Arturas. Uh, hello, everybody. Arturas, can you give me a control, please? Mm -hmm. Maybe Jan already gave you. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Hello, Jan. Can you see my my screen? And it yeah, is it's there, okay. It's full, it's full screen. It's great. Okay. So. Uh, I would like to say something about uh, the 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 designing or design of uh, of connection in idea statica uh, icon was we can say the first uh, bigger project what uh, where we uh, used idea statica in uh, peiko group this project 
was uh, actual five years, years, uh, years ago and we, des we designed it first connection maybe more than six years ago. So I would like to also mention, mention how how Adia Statica is moving forward and what is better now compared to the the history. Why we why we choose this program and what was our main aim? Well, uh, <clears throat> that that was the optimization of thickness of bolted and uh, end plates and end connection of delta beams. In this slide, you can see the the connection what was typical in bracings. Uh, Arthur has uh, presented uh, the typical pin connection in a in a standard uh, standard node, but as he mentioned, we used uh, bracings and bracings need some connection, and those connections were designed in Idea Statica. Um, here you can see the connection of bracing, bolted uh, and plate connection of delta beams, which was, which was able to transfer uh, tension and compression, and also shear and another bracing. The middle one is uh, simplified without bracing, and uh, on the right side you have a welded version. All details were uh, designed also in, as a welded because of uh, because of if something will not fit on site they will have an option to use welds instead of bolts so also during the design stage we pick out also with such a situation here you can see the the models in idea statica for us as a, as a designers and producers of uh, steel components was very essential to to reduce the thickness of end plates and that was the main main reason behind uh, using uh, Adia Statica. Adia Statica uh, assume real real deformation of end plate means take a prying effect into account means bolts are calculated according plastic uh, behavior plastic approach we can say means uh, you have a uh, higher forces in bolts but you are able to to assume yielding in end plate and that gives you we can say reasonable thickness so for example instead of 60 millimeter end plate you can have 30 or 40 and that's a big save of uh, money and that's give uh, that uh, after that you are able to 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 give a customer a better price so that was uh, that was behind the usage of of this uh, program and also another big uh, big advantage from our perspective is that idea statica uh, uh, have uh, such option that we are able or we have uh, we have a delta beam parametric section in their uh, profile library means that we are able to to have a real geometry of our beam and that gives you another option how to optimize uh, the the plates and also the uh, another another stuff like stiffeners or or some doublers of the plate uh, sorry, Mr. Uh, Herbie, for interruption. We have a question from audience. Uh, yeah, it's a question about uh, from which um, analysis software you you got or you import the um, loads to to a connections. If you can say a few words yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, the the main model was done in a Skia engineer. In uh, the the main responsible guy was Arturas Vitkus. So we have uh, forces from uh, from Skia. Uh, delta beams were designed in our internal Peiko designer uh, delta beam, and we input everything uh, in uh, Idea Statica from those two programs. Great, thank you. Welcome. So you can here uh, see also some some forces. So. Here we have a compression more than 3,000 kilonewtons. We also check buckling of these uh, details, and it was checked in uh, in 
idea statica as well. What I see as a big progress is that check of the wealth in that time means five years, six years ago it was not uh, so smooth as nowadays, but that was a really big step forward. Another another challenging issue was uh, insert such a complicated uh, geometry of gusset plate. In that time we were not able to do it uh, in simply way. We had to import the XF of this plate into Idea Statica and after that co continue with uh, with uh, we can say plate by plate and it takes hours and hours. But right now it is much, much better and they really make big step forward. Uh, another slide is about uh, about cantilever part detailing, but maybe I would like to say another what was uh, maybe we can say obstacle or challenge at that time, and that was uh, communication between uh, between en our engineers and our drafts guys. So. Uh, they had to produce uh, production drawings in Tecla, but uh, in that time they have uh, had to to do it uh, according uh, calculation reports, and that was not so simple for them to read uh, printed documents from in PDF. Right now they have. Uh, right now it's maybe two or three years ago. They have a such feature that you are able to. To, to send uh, this designer or draft, draft guy uh, your your model and he can check the all dimensions in viewer and that I see as a really really useful for internal cooperation. So to this uh, slide you can see the the connection of uh, cantilever part. Here, as Arthur said, that was a steel, not a composite structure because of uh, sulfate. And as you can see, the detailing is uh, much simpler because you can use a standard stuff. Uh, we uh, used Idea Statica to design these stiffeners, their position, and also thickness of stiffeners or doublers, and also design of weld. So this is a set of uh, set of details in top part of building. Also, I would like to continue with uh, Arturas, uh, and he told that these uh, details, these nodes, were produced in uh, our factory, and the connections uh, were done behind. So these uh, details welded. And we use Idea Statica for these stiffeners and also doublers of uh, the web of this uh, eye section. So here you can see the geometry of of the stiffeners, and that was the, another another big help and another part of uh, Idea Statica design. We use Idea Statica also as a double check or a check of the Eurocode calculations. This is a standard splicing connection of those uh, the trusses, and we use uh, Idea Statica to check if if we uh, we calc our calculation based on Eurocode are correct. So we use it as a also check of a, such a simple simple connections. And maybe that was uh, that was for us good that not all connections were so tricky, and that was on the end of the design phase that we have also something simpler to to solve. So that's that was all about uh, my side. And if you have another question, feel free to ask. If I will be able to answer, I will be glad. Okay. We have uh, here uh, another question, maybe more to Mr. Vitku's part, but uh, it, maybe it's also up to you. So, uh, how long was the cantilever part of the structure? How big was? Mm, if I remember correctly, maybe it's uh, something like 14 meters. 14 meters. 14, 15, yeah. Great. Hard to say with five years ago, so <laughs> but something like this, yeah. So basically, four trusses is, are holding this cantilever. Great. So yeah, probably from the previous pictures, uh, 
yeah, the attendee could could find the information. Thank you, thank you. And I will continue with my part. Um, okay, one more time. Fine, I hope you can see my my screen now so yes we we can see great thank you so we would continue with the um, connection itself so we just uh, uh, chose one of the like more complex ones from the same structure and uh, structural engineers from peco were so kind uh, she, they they provide me uh, their model so I can switch to it. Hopefully I have it here. So when I checked it, it still works after these five, maybe six years. So it seems like it's very well prepared and designed. And what I try to do right now is somehow remodel it in our most, um, most recent or the latest version of Co um, connection application. Uh, the, the goal isn't to compete uh, with the original design in sense of, uh, of the time, but uh, I would like to try if um, there is simpler way these days how to do it. So in the original design, I can see here all the manufacturing operations used and I counted uh, like 44 of them. So it was an easy task for the original designer to build it in the application from these days or these times. I tried to do it from a scratch. So this is the first screen you would see after running the connection app. And I try to find something similar, usable for this purpose. So I would start from from here and uh, adjust everything according to the original file. So I'll materials for the bolts. Uh, I think it was 24. You can give some name to it and create a project. And the reason for this presentation or demo is uh, mostly that it, you are asking or the attendees are asking for a manual designing of or building models, not showing just the fancy uh, progressive features, but also show sometimes something very easy. So uh, we can change cross sections according to the original. I think it's something quite huge like this and as we could see in this file here we we have uh, the delta beam cross section so it's implemented in our library so we can just find it between welded sections edit it according to the project yeah i have a big advantage I don't have to figure all these dimensions out because I already have us a working solutions. Okay, great. So I have the basic and now just with simple copying of the members, I can build the rest. So again, some bracing members. Okay. I could see that it's again some hollow section. So I will add like 200, I think. And use it also for the other side. Wait, I can move these, uh, these members further from the node. So I would guess something like this. 
could work. And we are missing the last member, this D2. So again, just change the inclination or the pitch and the cross section. Okay, this one. Okay, so the basic arrangement is there. We have all the members. It was quite quick. And the main bearing component is this, this plate. This plate is going through the column. The column is cut it and welded. And we can see these are, it's built from two parts. So we can do the same. Just adding some stiffening member. The transparent view is very useful when it's lost somewhere. You can find it quite easily here. So just rotation. Okay, it is thicker and we can make it quite large to have it big enough. And quick check in solid view. Fine. So some cuttings and welding. So the advantage of this operation is that we can make everything by one manufacturing operation. So not just the cuts, but also the welds are there already. And now I would proceed to this stop connection here on the B member. I will work just from the one side of the of the connection. So temporarily I can turn it off here and use a stop connection for member B. Okay, the bolts they are M30. Yeah, move it a little further again and adjust thicknesses. Ball distance, fine. And I can see that uh, the stop part isn't exactly what I found in the original file. So I can change it to something more usable. So not from a member, but the stop type will be specific cross section. Again, built manually from from plates. So the height the same as the delta beam, thickness, and the web, for example, like this. Okay, that's it. And Somehow I have to um, get rid of the web of this stop stop part. So I would use again a member cut, and I would cut the stop part with the plate SP1. So now in solid view I could see, yeah, it's there and it's again weld it together and to be precise I need to also erase somehow or cut the inside part of the stop so next cut operation of the of the stop according C column and yeah it's there so all the welds are already there and now I can polish a little this uh, M4 bracing member connection. So as, as a first step could be add some chamfers to the correct uh, corners. Can use the same operation for both corners and check it in the side view. Yeah, okay and some connection plate for this M4. So again, one operation for many purposes. So M4 and the 
will be connected to existing plate sp1 uh, and original file i can see that it's um, notched inside the, the hollow section not with the cap plate so notched member great and the thickness of the plate will be the same as the main plate it will, won't be bolted right now it will be edited in the next operation and just the size adjustment 50 something like this okay and not well uh, one of them should be there but not here okay the reason why i can see the weld it's yeah it's not aligned so not front but center and back with the uh, welds okay they, they are there and the splice operation so i can use the stiffening plate and it will be added to the plate of this um, diagonal so i can select it by arrow yeah it's not a rip it's a doubler and it's not welded it will be bolted so adjustment something like this okay and the thickness i would use the half of the main main plate so not 10 but 15 and copy it to a, to the other side so from front side to rear side and just some bolts change the number of plates bolted together and again just by selecting the specific plates now i can see that yeah the washer is there also and i will move the bolt grid a little yeah two rows like this okay and again just copy to the other side so the middle plate will be this cpl1 okay and it's not negative but positive value okay so we have it here great i can see some missing welds here so just add something yep you can see there right now and what can i do now to save some time for the other members i can use the publish operation so create some kind of template okay they go um 100 publish and it's right now up uploading to a server on cloud yeah so if i turn on these members i try to um, apply all these operations also on them so by propose function just select which members i'd like to connect together confirm and yeah i can see some previous tries so my actual one is this peco 100 and i can apply it just change the bolt size and you will see what will happen okay it's there and i just need to or it could be useful to rename the second step so i, I can distinguish both of them and some welds are missing right now and probably this plate will be doubled there so the second one can be turned off as well as the cut operation and that's why these error are here but it's just a matter of adjusting the correct stop part 
case tab too, so I, I can see the correct welds here. And what about the CPL plate? Okay, just by clicking on the operation itself, I can see it's like fixing automatically. So it's there right now. So that would be the upper part of the connection. I think I think nothing's missing right now. And I just try to add something for the the bottom diagonal member. So again, I could use the CPL or just copy from previous work. So for the plate, I can copy this one and just move it. Uh, okay, this could be zero, 500 and move it downwards. Fine. And yeah, the alignment isn't isn't perfect. So in editor, I can use this this chamfer and assign it to different corner like this. And in original original model, I can see it's um, yeah it's prepared like this. So I try to do something similar by this bevel operation. It will be on the corner number four. Apply. Fine. It's there. And yeah, I should just move it a little. Okay. Like this. Okay. CPL could be used for the third diagonal as well, so it won't be M5 but M6 and something larger. So, yeah, thickness is correct, but the length with 400, 400, great, it's there. And again, the same operation. So SP2 will be on the last plate like this. And copy it on the other side, also the rear side. Great. Now the bolt grid. I have to check all three, but yeah, it's there. And I need to use a little more. Okay, so not like this, but okay, that's better. Change the middle part and again, Fine. What's missing? I can see this cut is missing to connect it correctly with the with the column. So again, C member will be cut by a plate. This time it will be this SP7 plate. Okay, it's there, and we should weld together these these two main um gusset plates so operation weld and i have to change it to edge to edge and sp1 yeah i need to see the numbers of of edges so sp1 has a edge number one it's correct but the second one will be this and the edge is number five okay it's a butt weld, that's correct. So now I'm feeling like it could be it could be prepared and we can just try some some default loading, something small, just not to wait too long. Okay, like this. 
maybe some compression and we will see what can happen. Okay. Maybe you already know what the problem is right now, but we will find out probably very quickly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What about check? Okay. So that will be a question for some further investigation. And I can see that some other questions arise during my demo. So I try to go th through them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right now I could I could ask maybe Mr. Mr. Hruby for one question I can see here. So I try to unmute you. Uh, okay, you are unmuted. And uh, so waiting. okay, so I have a question from uh, some uh, attendee. Um, if uh, the buckling stability of the gusset plates uh, was solved, uh during the connection design so did you check yeah. the, the buckling yeah yeah we check the the buckling uh, the local buckling of the plates yeah was checked in uh, uh checked in idea static that functionality okay and as Great. i remember correctly maybe two or maybe one or two position we had to use uh, heavier plates but everything was okay and we used that functionality okay great and another question uh, if idea statica consider minimum distance for bolts from the edge of a plate so it's maybe more up to me uh yeah it does so we and we are I checking can i can confirm <laughs> Great, great. So edge distances are, are checked and it's uh, right according to the European or AISC uh, code check. Okay, so if I come back to um, my demo right now, yeah, I could um, just say that maybe some minor mistake was made there, but uh, I, I won't waste, waste time with this but the main thing is that the modeling itself or building of the of the model is almost done after <laughs> finding the this uh, this small bug but the number of operation is quite quite smaller so it's around 25 operations and the time spent thanks to uh, to the fact i had the solution file is about 20 minutes and yeah it's also thanks to a new proposed feature which could be used for a similar cases and if i jump back to a presentation just a small other technical information for you so um we are getting to the end of the of the presentation of the webinar but uh, after it we will be glad if you take a few minutes to our survey after it. And uh, if you want to repeat some part of the webinar, the recording, you, it will be available, available, sorry, available on our YouTube channel or in a support center in the part of the webinars. And if you didn't have, have a chance to try our applications, please uh, feel free to try our uh, trial version you can download it directly on a web page and most of the theory and practical information uh, are available in the support center part yeah some invitation for our next webinars so we are preparing in, in the next week um, it's a webinar for Midas civil it's uh, about bridge design of the pedestrian bridge in Prague 
end in February. It will be con another Connection Wednesday session um, with topic of code check of steel members uh, for it's uh, yeah focused for buckling problems. And if you're interested in using Idea Statica connection and you would like to um, get to more precise and more uh, complex tasks, so you could um, become a certified connection designer with our online course uh, Idea Statica Campus. And yeah, that could be all from our side today. If there are some questions left, we will for sure answer it by mail. I can check very quickly if there is something for the colleagues from Paykel company. Uh, so probably not right now what I can see. So yeah, in this moment, let me thank you for your attendance today, uh, for your time and um, mostly I would like to thank my panelists, uh, the structural engineers from PECO, so Mr. Hruby and Mr. Witkus. I, I will unmute you for a minute. Uh, so thank you for your time. If you want to uh, say hello to our attendees, feel free to do so right now. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to present uh, present our reference project, and maybe we hope so that was good for us to remind that we made something like that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for today's uh, presentations and uh, helping me with me with this part and. Uh, Take care and stay stay healthy these days. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.